Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. We are so delighted that you've chosen to be with us today. I'm George Cope and it's my privilege to be your host for the next 30 minutes as we introduce to you reasons why you can smile for living in Central Florida. Let me ask you a question. You tired of bad news? If you're tired of the bad news, you've turned into the right station today because all we've got to talk about is the good news of Jesus Christ and what he is doing in Central Florida to make a difference. You live in a community that is not being ignored by either God nor God's people. And today we want to introduce you to an event that happened uh, a year ago and it is now in place to be an ongoing event in Central Florida making a difference with the impoverished, the poor, the homeless of our community. And it all comes down because one man heard God's voice. Would you please join me in welcoming Pastor Tim Johnson. Thank you, Pastor Tim, George. welcome to Joy in Our Town. Grateful to be here. Grateful for TBN to have me on. It is always a privilege to sit with you. You and I are friends, and so I just sort of feel like uh, we've, got a, we've got some water. We're going to have a conversation <laughs> today and talk about stuff that is important to us. You love Jesus, you love this city, and you love homeless people. Um, but there's a journey to get here. And I wish I had all the time. We could show all the clips, but right. you, you played college football, All-American, pro football, you're a Super Bowl winner. But uh, all of that pales in comparison to one day after football, God said, Tim Johnson, I've got a new plan for you. Tell us about that plan. It wasn't my plan, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go to law school and be a judge and be active in uh, the way uh, communities were being developed, as, at least on the uh, justice side. But God had a different plan. He enlisted me into ministry. I went to Nashville first uh, to pastor and, and co-labor with our ministry there to build a diverse congregation. And, and in 2006, God spoke to me while I was on vacation in Orlando to plant a church in Orlando. And so uh, this is now my wife and I and our team, this is our life's work. and. Um, you know, you talk about loving Jesus. I remember one Sunday I was in the church and our worship leader, uh, Tammy Monk, was leading worship and she said something that struck me. And she said, we love you, Jesus, too. We love you, too, because you loved us first. And so the love that, that, that I have for Jesus is because he loved me first. So football was a, a very unusual track to get to ministry. And yet when God called you and he called you to Orlando, you did something very unusual. Tell the folk uh, about what God asked you to do to sort of prioritize and how all of this begins to lead up to what we really want to talk about quickly and pour most of our time in. He got up. Hi, tell us about the journey. The, the journey for me has been one um, that is very uncommon. I remember when I got saved because I didn't grow up a Christian. I didn't grow up in a Christian environment. I didn't know a lot of the rules and regulations. But when Jesus set me free and saved me from my sin, I told him yes. And I never intended to say no when he asked me to do something. So there's been some very out of the box things that he's asked me to do or whispered to me to do. And one of them was to pray and walk the state of Florida. So March 4th, 2013, I started in Pensacola Courthouse, April 18th, 11 weeks and 698 miles later, I walk onto South Beach. And I don't understand it all, except <clears throat> to know Florida at that time was ranked third with the most crimes in the United States. And so there's a lot of issues that we have programs for and resources for, but there's certain things that only God can do. So this wasn't at the dismissal of all that we need to do. It was to ask God, for the help we need for hearts and minds to actually be healed and for darkness to be pierced by his light. Mm -hmm. So that led you to Florida or to, to Orlando and let's get right to the issue because God birthed something in you that is beginning to impact our city. It did last year, it's going to this year, and it will do so in years to come. I'm prophetically declaring that. He got up is here to stay. Uh, to tell us, what is He Got Up, and how does He Got Up, uh, how did it change you, and how is it changing this community? Um, he, he Got Up is a celebration of people lifting people. 
And um, when I was in 2014 on a treadmill walking, exercising, I felt this burden in my heart for those who are living in hotels, living in the woods, living in their vehicles, living in shelters who really don't want to be there. And so many of these people, not the chronic homeless necessarily, families and individuals that are in transition who have jobs, sometimes two and three jobs, these individuals have dignity, have self-respect. They just have had episodes that have landed them in a difficult space that they can't get out of, even though they try as hard as they can. And so, so many times what it takes for an individual to deal with one situation in their lives is weeks of being on the phone or showing up at places and not being guaranteed that your issue is going to be dealt with. So there's a lot of hurdles. What I believe is, is, is God's heart is that the resources meet the people a lot quicker. And so he got up, addresses a large number of people in need with a large scale base of resources with one step. It's bringing people together. And to do that, it actually takes us as individuals, stakeholders, corporations, government entities, uh, uh, private individuals, business owners, service providers, faith, uh, uh, houses of faith, all actually developing a mind of oneness around addressing an issue that is a crisis. Many times we wait for a catastrophe. We call it a crisis, but we wait for a riot or injustice. And we gather, we look at it, we're divided because we pick sides over what the incident is versus saying, you know what, if you look across uh, uh, the, the landscape of, of Chicago and, and, and L.A. And, and, and St. Louis and all these different places, Missouri, you look at the places where we've seen tension and division, it all boils down to one thing. People have needs. They have needs. And if we're always on the reactive side, waiting for a crisis or a catastrophe to expose the needs, we're never going to resolve it. So what I believe he got up is, is, is an active, proactive measure to say, we're not going to wait for the 350,000 individuals who are in need in our community to come to us or figure it out themselves. We're going to go to as many as we can together, which allows us to be united in meeting the need rather than uh, uh, divided and reacting to the crisis. So it's a demonstration of the love of God in the most tangible way, tangible way possible because when the Holy Spirit spoke to me, he said, I'm not looking for just another worship service. I'm looking for your worship to become service to those in need. This summer, I was in tears like a lot of other people watching uh, um, people getting gunned down, uh, mostly young black men. It was so painful to sit there and watch this over and watch the fires burning in the street. And I'm thinking, God, what is creating the tension is cities that are living in tension in hostile environments, communicating to the masses, this is our answer. When is there going to be a city in mass creating a moment to say this is our answer? It's not to to, to destroy is to celebrate the opportunity we have together to make a massive difference. So it's interesting to me that, that what you have just described now is uh, God took your sanctuary and uh, the sanctuary of a football field because a lot of people are listening saying, well, I hear that, that sounds sort of like a good idea. We could do that at our church. But this was no little church or a park. You, last year and this year and next year until Jesus comes, you've taken over the, uh, the Camping World Bowl in downtown Orlando, a stadium, and you did it in a stadium. What, we, what was that we, motivation? We had, we had 56 bus stops across Osceola, Seminole, Orange County, 100 buses that drove 4,000 miles, making transportation available to those who didn't have it that live in those vulnerable places. And the stadium was probably the only place to pull this off, to have a massive event that's going to be a resource base for a large number of people and bring the community together. Because poor people don't celebrate. They live hard lives. And if they do have crowds, there's something going on that maybe is not the best. So we brought all these individuals together because the stadium is probably the only place that we can actually see the level of resources made available and logistically to be able to handle it. So stadiums represent community, vision, celebration, great concerts, games, 
Poor people don't get to go to these places for those reasons, so we wanted to make sure they had a first-class experience in an environment that's going to actually lift them up. And I was privileged to be there, but uh, help our viewers. When they got there, they came through the gates and they were yeah. loved on and treated. I can say that. But what yeah. were all the different things that they got serviced, provided for? Again, homeless, disenfranchised, the working poor. When they got there, tell, tell our viewers what so, they got to receive. So we had... First of all, I was blown away when I pulled up at about 6.30 in the morning. It was dark outside. We had almost 2,000 volunteers, people coming from everywhere. And so there was a massive volunteer tent, and then next to it, uh, a tent where individuals who would be in need come and they register. They had uh, lanyards. We, we wanted this to be a VIP experience. We had gifts galore for them. So they would come in, and when they would see, the first uh, area of service they would see would be the personal care. We had barbers from all three counties, North Carolina, uh, um, down in Miami area, and there was a couple hundred barbers there doing hair, haircuts. One woman said, I hadn't had a haircut in five years. And so we did about 4,000 haircuts, and it was so compelling to see these barbers lined up, not in a barber battle, but in a way of restoring people and their dignity and their sense of uh, uh, value. And then right around the corner, we had uh, educational institutions. We had uh, employers that actually were the, the, the place where individuals could apply for a job. We had career source there to help with technical training for jobs that are livable wages. And then we had the legal uh, section, we had the medical health and wellness section, free diabetic shoes, we gave, uh, uh, we had 5,000 medical referrals, we had showers, uh, Clean the World provided showers, we had two thrift stores, one outside, one inside, extremely well done. Uh, my wife is actually gonna add a, a, a blessing boutique element to this, uh, make it even, even nicer than last year. We had food, uh, we had Starbucks on every corner, uh, uh, Chief Riley of the jail actually had her team out there. They cooked about 10,000 hot dogs and hamburgers. Uh, so it was endless what we were able to provide for individuals that was practical help to let them know they're not forgotten and that you can have these episodes resolved so you can get your own life back. I tell you what we're going to do, Tim. We're going to stop right now. We're going to show a clip of uh, the event. We're going to let them hear your heart. And I want you to stay. Watch this because what Tim has just described, you're about to see in its full glory. And when we come back, we're going to challenge people to get involved and help them to know how to do that. So you watch this clip. We'll be right back. This past Easter, the inaugural He Got Up Celebration and Resource Fair assisted thousands of our neighbors in need by providing transportation, legal services, job opportunities, food, showers, clothing, medical referrals, and even haircuts. What happened and what's happening literally is a miracle. I, I, it was supposed to storm the day, it was rain, the sun came out. Many people say maybe this was a bad idea, it wouldn't happen. There, I don't know how many people, there's a lot of people here. The technology, the volunteers, the sponsors, all the different other organizations, they showed up. They're actually here and people's lives are being changed. And I'm just a little bit overwhelmed, quite honestly. I'm just a little, little bit overwhelmed to see something that started in my heart with the Lord speaking to me about reaching out to those who are the fringes of our society and city in three counties, bringing them together to see them get lifted up because Christ rose from the dead. He got up to lift us up so that we can lift others up. It's actually taking place. We're gonna cut the ribbon. We get uh, all of our hands. Let's get these hands on here. And this ribbon cutting is the opening ceremonies for He Got Up. 2016. And so, um, if everybody can say one, two, three, we can cut this. Are right, you ready? One, two,
today we're doing is we're celebrating things that we take for granted. So we have about 300 barbers out here. We're just doing some hair. We're making sure that uh, people are being taken care of. They look good, they feel good, and making sure they have a great experience. I originally came for the job fair thing to see what they all have to offer. But they're giving away clothes, they're giving away food, giving away a bunch of knowledge, information, schooling choices. They're giving you um, health and wellness. It's, it's very, you know, it's a very fun experience. Walked around to see what they had, and then I went and took my shower, and then I got my hair cut, and I got some clothes. That, that sounds like and a now, good... And now I'm going to go eat after I get my hair cut, and I'm going to jump my bus and go home. That it's finally time for the community to stand up and do things for Orlando, for the city, to create a change that's going to impact cities all over the United States of America. Able to stand up. He got up. They're going to be able to resurrect from wherever they came from, from the bad life, from the dead of where they're at, and they're going to resurrect to a greater good, which would be changing their lives, getting jobs, getting their health right, getting their haircuts right, looking good, getting their families together, and getting their lives together all together. If we come together from all walks of life, ethnicities and backgrounds, by the grace of God, we will become a powerful force in seeing change in Central Florida and eventually our nation. So there you have it, folks. That's He Got Up. What you just viewed is a revolutionary kind of mindset, but it's what Jesus was all about, wasn't it, Pastor? I felt when I did get the word that the Lord said, go, don't wait for them that, that he put the burden on my heart. Don't wait for them to come this time. Go get them. And I think that was Jesus' admonition, wasn't it? In Matthew 28, go, go into all the world. And uh, yet we have been, and, and I, I think we've just got to be honest, and, and we're trying to do that with this program, that the church tends to be reactionary rather than proactive. Mm -hmm. And he got up is just, this is Jesus in your face. We're going to get up. We're going to go forward. We're going to do this. Now, we're getting ready. We're, we're soon, we're approaching the event in the spring at Easter time. Uh, we, you need help. Mm -hmm. So what do you need from our viewers? There are people that are watching now that have been touched by this and say, hey, I didn't know about that, but now that I know, I got to do something. What, what can we do? Well, um, the website, hegotup.org, is, is the best place to start to do one of three things. Volunteer, uh, and there's different time blocks that you can volunteer in specific areas. We have people that may be watching that are uh, proficient in um, job training or uh, have medical background or legal background. We need a lot of those people. Uh, and then sponsors, individuals that want to carry a bigger burden to say, you know what, I want to really be a part of this in a big way. And one of the ways they can even participate in that is we have a golf tournament at the Ritz uh, March 2nd and 3rd um, that we are still looking at a title sponsor for and we're developing foursomes and we'll have celebrities there from around the country, athletes and others. And so um, I think being able to offer their skills, their talents and their resources is, is the best way. So if you are wanting to engage with He Got Up, the number one, we need you physically to show up on that particular day and get involved. Again, go to hegotup.org and that way you can find all of the service opportunities are there. And if you're a golfer, I mean, we live in the golfing capital of America. If you love to play golf, Pastor Tim, I, you'll be there, won't you? Yes, I will be there. Yeah, and I know that you've got some friends that, uh, that love to come and be a part of this, this experience. Um, there has been transformation. I mean, people got jobs. Didn't Hilton, Hilton Hotels hired we, uh, we, more than two dozen people, didn't we they? We had people two days after he got up. What, what, what Hilton did specifically is they gave out golden tickets. And so if you got a golden ticket, you come on site, get an interview. We had people getting jobs two days afterwards. In fact, some of the volunteers who were serving got jobs. Um, so we had uh, amazing results from not just Hilton, we had uh, uh, Universal, uh, um, uh, Lowe's, um, Starbucks, we had various companies, Orange County Technical College uh, was there, and we're expanding that uh, this year, Goodwill uh, was there also. We had uh, one lady who lives out in the woods uh, in Kissimmee. Um, she was a nurse, from what I understand her story, she was a nurse at, at one time. But she had some situations in her life she couldn't overcome, and, and now she's about 
350 pound gang green legs live with a bunch of cats in the woods. We got her and a bunch of other folks, folks from Osceola to he got up. Not only did they have a chance to be at an Easter service, but she got clothes, a haircut, a new wheelchair ordered, and her food assistance turned on, which was critical. Uh, DCF was there on site, live, and they paid their employees to be there so that we can provide that one step instead of going to an office and having to fill out paperwork and get people on phones. One step. Uh, and there's tons of story. We had um, uh, a day in court, May 20th, as a follow-up, where $450,000 worth of fines, fees, and court costs were reduced to community service. People got their lives, their license back. Now they can get, enter back into the mainstream as valuable citizens with their community service being added to restoring the community rather than being a liability. I think it's clear to say that there's really not been anything like this in America before to this magnitude. The mayor has been on board, so Mayor Dyer is behind you 100%. Orange County is behind you. Mm -hmm. Mayor Jacobs is behind you. So this has been involved. Um, you, you made comment about services. I, I, I need you to talk for a moment about the, this one-stop concept because so many people in homelessness, they start the process and they get shut down and then what happens to them? I had, um, I was in a, a meeting one day and a young lady um, who was previously homeless, she wasn't anymore, talked about her experience as a teenager being homeless and how much time she had to spend trying to resolve the situations that she needed resolution for and how demeaning, how defeating, how much it actually took away hope. We actually had a person that he got up said, I feel human again. And I just nearly cried because I thought, who told you to stop being human? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes the system of getting help can be so complicated if you don't have an advocate, if you don't have direct access, it's gonna take you a while. And people get frustrated and they'll drop out. And so what we saw is individuals come in a day, in one day, not only again, be inspired and have hope, but have issues, real life issues resolved. One guy, all he wanted was his driver's license back to drive trucks again. That's it. He can provide for his own family. But if you live with the fear of not knowing or thinking something's gonna happen if I go to the courthouse, you don't get past it. And so we're literally, Pastor George, literally breaking barriers between needs and resources that are so critical to restore our community by restoring the people in it. Last year we had, uh, you had about 10,000 homeless and disenfranchised people. What's the goal this year? We wanna see at least 30,000 individuals in need uh, coming into Camp and World Stadium this year. And you had about 2,000 volunteers for 10,000, so that means you need about 6,000 <laughs> volunteers. Uh, <laughs> friend, uh, unapologetically, I ask you on Palm Sunday, come to the Camping World Bowl, but go to hegotup.org and get involved. You're just giving time, and your time is being Jesus' hands and Jesus' feet and Jesus' heart. Tim Johnson, you make me smile. <laughs> you make me you smile. <laughs> make, you make this community better. I am glad to be a part mm. of a community where there's a man like you pastoring a church that is saying, I'm not willing to just preach on Sundays and run my programs, but I really want to make a difference. I want you to take, we've got a minute and a half left. I want you to look in that camera and I just want you to challenge people on your heart. From a pastor's point of view, would you just let them hear your heart one more time, invite them to be a part and let's see what God's going to do this year at He Got Up. Well, I, for me, it's kind of simple. I remember sitting with my family on vacation and watching the news reels over and over again, um, the, the deaths that were taking place and how people were really at each other and, and my heart broke. And the thought that came to me is if we don't come together, we will continue to come apart. And He Got Up is an opportunity for us to demonstrate not only our love for the master himself, but our love for our neighbor, whom he told us to actually love. So please join us in every way that you possibly can and let's watch God not only be celebrated as the one in Christ who got up, but let's lift others up in his name. Well, there you have it. 
joy in our town today is because of Tim Johnson and He Got Up. I encourage you to uh, again go to the website, hegotup.org, get involved, give, participate, bring people with you, and let's make this year's He Got Up the greatest in the history of our city. Well, thanks for joining us today. We'll be back next week. Until then, don't you ever forget it. Jesus loves you. He really does. Bye for now.